University. I have a master's degree in special need education. And also uh, about five years ago, I got uh, another master's degree in creative writing. I'm currently working on my memoir mm -hmm. and uh, uh, on about parenting, about, um, uh, about parenthood. And I have also been um, doing a lot of uh, positive education work. Okay. Um, it's very much related to positive psychology of how to help um, students, children, family to better understand uh, how to raise the kids in a much positive way. So I've been a, a, a positive parenting coach for the last couple of years and I run workshops and uh, courses for parents in school, I go to the PTA and so it's just, this is really lovely because I, I as, a, as a fellow mother, I also learn a lot from uh, being with other parents as well. Okay, um, I want to um, give a notification, a technical notification. Um, in China, we have to go mm -hmm. through a, well, basically a VPN to go over the firewall, the, the Great Wall. So there is some technical um, silences from time to time. So I will be letting you know when there is an issue with the signal, okay? Uh, so, okay. and I also uh, ask for those who are watching for forgiveness if we have this situation, but it's the reality of being here in China. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's get then to the topic that we wanted to talk about. The idea of this video is to help parents who are right now either in isolate, self-isolation or doing the whole social distancing. Um, what do you think? Um, can be done? What are some good ideas, some tips for these parents that are all of a sudden 24-7 with, with their children at home and sometimes even having to work? So what, what, what could you, how could you give us some pointers in this uh, particular situation? Absolutely, Fernando. Um, with this absolutely unexpected circumstances, we just catch everybody off guarded and unexpected. We have working parents, we have kids going to school, but suddenly everybody stay home. But let me give you a, a, a snippet of um, how we are dealing with uh, the, uh, the self isolation. So we, most of the time at home, uh, the only time we go out is when we get basic grocery and my morning coffee, which happened to be just across the street, <laughs> thank goodness. So, so we don't eat out and we don't go to shopping more. In the beginning, it was very difficult for the family because the normal routines like getting ready for uh, writing in the morning, uh, meeting parents, baseball practice for my son was suddenly all gone. Mm. Instead, seven. so there is a feeling of panic, unknown, don't know what's happening next. So it is, it is daunting, it is. So before I go into uh, my parenting tips, I would like to reassure all the parents out there, it is okay to feel vulnerable. You're not alone. Yes, as it parents, is, it is, it is something that um, yeah. we all share this, this mm. situation that came out of nowhere. And this is the reason why we're doing this video because I know that a lot of people don't know how to handle the situation. So I really, really yeah. appreciate um, your uh, information and what you're sharing here. So um, yeah. let's go then with, with the tips. What would you say is one of the first things to do? I think the first thing uh, to do is right now everyone was thinking, oh, let's find out when is this outbreak is going to end. To me, I think the focus should not be let's find out when it's going to end because the fact of the matter is we do not know. Mm -hmm. And we are in the thick of it. We are, for, for us in Asia, our children have been out of school for almost three months. In America, in North America, you guys just begin. So my advice is instead of focusing on when is this going to end? But to focus on how we're going to make this new temporary new life at home. 
the well-being of the children, the well-being of everyone in the family, I think is the most important uh, aspect that we parents need to uh, uh, focus on. And now, um, um, so I, I, my, my, my first parenting tips for everyone is gather everyone in the family, have a family meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, honestly, I mean, this is uh, what. What do we do when we have crisis? We get a, get everybody together and share some uh, of our fears, mm -hmm. some of our concerns, mm -hmm. um, to share with everybody things like stay calm, know that you are not alone, stay connected, make time in the day to talk to people, stay connected. Stay productive, uh, stay productive mm -hmm. giving yourself some stress and focus on work and stay positive. So I um, uh, would like to show the photo number three sure. so we can, uh, yeah, thank you. All right, it's on. Okay, yep. so um, the main objective for family meeting is to give everyone a chance to share, okay? To share, to express the current feelings and emotions and to reassure everyone is entitled to their feelings. Because I think with children, they are either too scared to, to, to speak up, uh, they're, they're not certain, uh, they don't know how to express themselves. So I think uh, having a family meetings um, to allow this open and safe environment for uh, everyone to express their feeling and to acknowledge each other's feelings is important. Mm -hmm. My second point is, as parents, we need to take charge to explain. At this difficult time, everyone needs to be on the same page. What does that mean? Meaning, we all have to work like a sport team. Uh, teamwork. <laughs> team spirit. It's, it's an uncertain time. Right, and it is going to be our, our uncertainty, our um, anxiety is going to cause conflicts among us in the family. So having a, a meeting like this, letting everybody uh, have this space, this safe space, no one's criticizing uh, each other to understand that we are a collective one. Yeah. We are on the same page, we are trying to work together and hope for that one day our routine can return to us. Our third point is come up with some positive ground rules together, like agree to disagree, be the first to apologize, to be more expressive with our gratitude, meaning saying thank you, please, you know, a lot of those kind of things, we get to um, uh, we forget those things when we are uh, upset with each other, we are on top of each other uh, because of this new norm that we are suddenly together on 24-7. So forgive each other over little things, offer to help, be the first one to leave the room, come up with a funny joke. All these things are some great ground rules. I think uh, a family uh, meeting can um, collectively come up with. and. Um, my last point on uh, the purpose of hosting a family meeting is to bring some a list of routines for the family and how to what kind of routines, how are these routines can keep up. For example, routines of doing chores together around the house, helping with the cooking, uh, organizing movie nights, board game nights, or even some online family games together, right? I, I actually it was a positive relationship, but I like everyone. I like what you mentioned about gratitude because we live in a in a society in today's life where we receive and we have so much that we take for granted. But when you are put in a situation where your back is against the corner, where not everything is the way it was, when you change normality, mm -hmm. it forces us to appreciate what we don't have right now so I really like that point Te Absolutely. teaching children yeah. to be grateful yeah. for the things that we have 
we might be exactly. um, aware of the things that we don't have right now, but it's a great opportunity yeah. to teach them, hey, look what we have. We have yeah. food, Absolutely. we have a bed. We yeah. have. That's, that's fantastic. I have another interesting thing that um, I want to comment. For a lot of children, this time, automatically they think, oh, we don't have to go to school. This is just more vacation, more holiday. So <laughs> I think that giving children uh, structure during this time is important. So you mentioned the routines. Um, so yes. it's, it's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, just give children. Let me say more. Yes. Sure. Give, give, give parents yes. a, a more clear idea about what that means. Okay. Okay. Well, this so-called temporary new life, being together 24-7, parents that work from home, uh, kids are not able to go to the parks, meet their friends, and so on. It will. It is going to be our new norm for the family, right? I mean, let's 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 face it. Okay. So while while we are in this situation, I think it's very important that we all have or create some new routines mm -hmm. and schedule them. So throughout the days. Not only we will not be on top of each other, but we have our own schedules to do. And um, the, um, why is it so important to have uh, schedules and routines? Let me uh, explain. Let me pull out a, a slide. Which one would you like me to share? Yes. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is teamwork, guys. We, we, we have prepared yeah, this for a couple of days. So. <laughs> Actually, let me explain a little bit about routine first. Sure. I think routines are, uh, regardless of how old our, our children are, routines are essential. Mm -hmm. And because we provide a sense of security and stability. So they know when they get up what is going to happen, what is next. Instead of kids will say, what do I do now? What's next? I'm bored, what do I do, right? So a routine helps them to feel this is a sense of security. Right now, they feel a bit of a loss because they don't go to school, so they don't know, they, they feel they don't have to get up. So I think the routine is very important. It helps children, to, it helps our children to develop good habits such as self-care and self-discipline. Yeah. Routines allow it, will, it also allow our children to feel safe, knowing what to expect next, as I said earlier. Of all time, I, th I really think this is a time that our children need a very healthy routines the most to cope with all the uncertainty, the unfamiliar changes. The, so routine provides some form of stability and certainty. And by having daily routine, such as watching a news together, doing our online study, a scheduled time for board games after dinner, reading time before before night, uh, bedtime, all these things, we are trying, as parents, what we are trying to do is create a normality for our children. Yeah, I, and I, that routine I will help them. I completely to, agree with you. Um, yeah. could you. Could you give us an example of, for example, the routine that you have for, for your son? Uh, whom I've met earlier. Yep. <laughs> um, if we could talk about that so we have a more clear idea of what this means and something that parents could copy, uh, plain and simple. Um, could you could you illustrate a little bit that? Yes, yes, yes. I, I Okay, what my son do, I mean, we, uh, they wake up in the morning, I, he used to say, Mom, do I have to wake up at 7.30? Now we have no school. <laughs> I said, no, we're going to create just like we're going to school, we get up at 7.30, he has his breakfast, and because of this time, we watch the, day, uh, the morning news together for about half an hour, and then we talk about it a little bit, and then off he goes to do his uh, online uh, schoolwork, and every hour, we will come out, he will come out, we'll do uh, some stretching out in the balcony, we do a five minutes meditation, and uh, then we return to our work again and another hour we come out then instead of doing his work he would do some uh, reading he would uh, listen to his audio book and uh, uh, and then that will be around lunch time and during lunch time we watch a little bit more news and then we talk 
and after that uh, we would go down to uh, because we live right by the river so we go down there which is actually no one there right now mm -hmm. so we would go for a walk and, um, uh, uh, run around a bit get some fresh air and um, up in the afternoon we spend time to um, uh, uh, a bit more time to finish his work and then he started to uh, a new language, so with Duolingo, so he's doing uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, things online. And um, he, of course, looked forward to his gaming time. So every day he <laughs> time uh, when he accomplishes his work. And uh, uh, honestly, this whole schedule is um, a collaborative work between uh, he and I. And the point I really want to stress here of uh, creating a routine is for parents to remember and to be mindful not to do the schedule for them That's or to so impose important. the routine. That's so interesting. It, it, um, if, it, if they collaborate in creating the schedule, they'll be more committed to it, uh, I suppose. So uh, I would yeah. like to read you a couple because, of, of uh, comments here. Uh, somebody saying, yep. uh, Ibrahim Ningbo says, I also get online free courses. So you are learning a new language, which, oh, oh, well, your son is learning a new language or practicing a language that he um, already speaks or what is he learning? He, he's learning Vietnamese. Oh. He's fascinated with the language. And this app um, on, uh, on the phone is called Duolingo mm -hmm. and have lots of other languages. He also picked up French um, uh, uh, on that app as well previously. But here in Vietnam, because um, uh, not many people speak English, so uh, he's very uh, driven to uh, learn some conversational uh, um, Vietnamese. And it's a great app for kids of all ages. In fact, it's not, it's not just for kids. It's even for adults as well. It's very interactive and it, it's lovely. Later on, that's what I would talk about of uh, this um abnormal time what can what how can we make the best out of this abnormal time that we're going through and one of them is as a family we learn the language together that's so you know cool. i mean <laughs> yeah back to uh, just finish up with the why i think uh, um it's very important for us parents not to do the routine for our children but instead work with them, bring some a list of routines for the day, for the week. For example, like I said earlier, you must do your online study, you must have your breakfast, you must do uh, uh, some exercises, all those routines. Work with them together to come out with a schedule. Because if, is it just, if it is a routine that is imposed by us, mm -hmm. they would not be committed they would not want to do that. So my son would say, I, I want gaming time from seven to eight, or I want gaming time from four to five after I, I finish certain works. So I think that having them involved, having them participate, owning the schedule themselves it would make them want it even more to complete it. I've actually had a, a couple of photos that I took of my son's schedule. Sure, which one? Um, can you um, show a photo number four? Photo number four. Here you are. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, um, that is, um, um, was done uh, in Excel spreadsheet. Together we um, uh, this say is done by what your time son, do you want. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. But uh, this was done uh, probably about two months ago. So he has been following this schedule, but a lot of them was suggestion made by me. Okay. okay, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. And it's, it's two, about uh, a week ago, let's show photo number five. Photo number five, here we go. What is and, this? And um, <laughs> is, is it mom? Actually, I think of a different way to, to, to uh, uh, create my uh, routine and schedule. I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to write it on the board in my room and because I can see it, I cross it out, it makes me happy and you know what, actually I learned something too. He owned it, he feel good because this is his schedule. Yeah. 
So I can't stress enough for the parents out there listening. We don't have to pack their schedule uh, hour by hour to make sure we pack everything in. No, discuss with your child, come up with a list of things, some from us, some from him or her, and then compromise and see how can we achieve all those? Okay, you want two hours of gaming time. H how you manage, okay? <laughs> how, what, what is your workload like, right? So they would, I mean, they're very creative little creatures. They would say, okay, so that means I will get up at six o'clock so I can uh, finish my work. I can uh, help out with the house. And then that's fine with me too. So I, I think owning, make, making them own the um, schedule is very important, especially that at this time that we honestly don't know how long this um, uh, uh, outbreak is going to be. Instead of keep on thinking, next week is going to be okay, next week is going to be okay, we should focus on let's find a schedule that our kids made it. Mm -hmm. It's them who make it. So, in, in honestly, having this good habit of having a schedule, it's not just good for this time at this crisis. It's going to be good for life. Having a good habit, having a routine, doing it in a schedule to help them to time management, to uh, understand self-discipline, understand being motivated by his own schedule. I think that is uh, uh, some very good uh, uh, learning for our children at this time. I agree. I agree a lot with this. Um, I have another, another question or something else that I would like to talk about. Um, for a lot of parents, for themselves, this is a very challenging situation. This is something that brings so much uncertainty, so much stress. Um, but they are expected to be, well, beacons of light. They, they have to be strong. They have to be um, purveyors of calm and, and assertiveness in the household. So what, what else can parents do to, well, create an atmosphere that gives that, that vibration, that sensation of um, calm and uh, assertiveness in the home, even though they are stressed? Yeah, yeah. As I you is that I shout to all the parents that it is okay to be vulnerable. It is okay to feel at a loss. We don't have to be strong all the time. I'm not suggesting that tears in our in front of our children. I'm not saying that. I am saying that it is okay to talk to our children or to, when our family time to say, "Hey, guys, guys." We are at this difficult time. We as parents is also at a loss. We try our best, but we need everyone to pull their strength together. And no better time than now to everyone collectively stay positive, encourage each other, have positive thoughts that would driven into actions and in fact, that is my parenting tip number three, which is how to create a much more positive environment at home. I understand what we are going through right now, but it is no, no good to anybody to sit around and worry, okay? Yeah, I am worried too. I actually worry that if, what if I get sick tomorrow? Oh, what if it's so my turn? Important. Yeah, because... Well, parents, parents do everything they can to keep their children healthy yeah. and to keep themselves healthy, but you never know when you might get mm -hmm. sick and how that is going to affect, how it's going to pound on top of this situation and make it yeah. even worse. Um, so, of course, that's a concern absolutely. that many people have. Yeah, um, absolutely because of that reason, more so that we have to uh, collectively as a family to create a positive environment for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we cannot do it. It's not just one person. It's not just a mom or just a dad or, or, or someone. We have to do it together. It is very easy for us to focus on the negative. 
especially at a time like this, okay? Every day we turn on the TV, that's bad news, the rising numbers of death and stuff. And I'm not saying that we turn off the TV, okay? But what I am saying is have more time together and to express our feelings. It is okay to have negative feelings, but how do we deal with those negative feelings by having positive thoughts, how to go through this process of negativity and come out in a better end. I think um, what, I, what, what, I, what I would suggest, uh, actually I would go back a little bit is, I'm not suggesting that we do not turn on the TV, we do not uh, talk about the news and, uh, uh, or anything. No, in fact, my son and I would go through news in the morning we go through uh, 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 different channels to uh, learn more about the news. But the key thing is, how do you discuss the news with your children? How to make them uh, learn something positive from there? In fact, I find it very interesting, this um, uh, platform, it's called The Conversations. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, um, uh, from Australia. They wrote an uh, article of teaching uh, three ways to teach children how to think critically about the news. Okay, so critical thinking is something that uh, is a skill that we would like our children to learn as well in school. Uh, when we try to at home, when we have a piece of news, how do we teach our children to read it critically? Meaning, don't take everything on face value. Right, yeah. and how we analyze it uh, and to uh, understand the facts to begin with, and secondly, where's the source come from, and thirdly, upon reflections, what comes out from your own uh, uh, analysis, your own thinking, right? And it's not just about oh, uh, the news said that this is going to happen, but how to think critically how to uh, uh, guide our children to have an open discussion to say, okay, let's find out a way to learn. That, I mean, let's find out how we can um, get something out of this news that would uh, uh, help us to think uh, more positively. Sure. I think that when children watch the news, it is normal for them to feel fear to be afraid of what's being displayed on the screen um, but it's also common for adults to have the same reaction when they read the news so that conversation that sharing of hey I'm also afraid about this information but let's dissect it and see where we are how we are preventing this from happening to us absolutely um, absolutely you're right absolutely that's what I'm uh, 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 exactly by discussing the news by dissecting the news, by sharing each other's viewpoint about the news, mm -hmm. okay? And from there, I honestly, there is always so much silver lining in, in everything that's happening around us, is to see what is what what can we uh, uh, learn from it. Yeah, my brother How can just, we just joined the, the live stream and see, he says hello, he's got two children and um, I think yes. that this is important for, for everybody to know. You can't pretend to cover the sun with your hands. Children are going oh. to find out the news, what's happening um, one way or another. Uh, now with mobile phones and computer time and, and the internet, they will see what's happening around. So it's probably better that it comes from a source that they can trust like their parents. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, exactly. So let's continue talking about this positive positive home, positive life that, that we can yeah. create at home. Exactly. I know it sounds very easy, oh, how to stay positive at a time like this, but if we put our mind to it, uh, that is the only best way to uh, deal with the current situation right now, is having a number of um, uh, strategies, I would call. Number one is having more positive talks mm -hmm. at home. Uh, we, are, we are all stressed. We are uh, on top of each other. We're 24-7 together. So how can we use those ground rules that we have collectively come up with in our family meeting earlier 
to say, you know what, let's forgive each other. Let's not go down that path. Look for silver linings. I came up, uh, I, um, one of the very, uh, 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 sorry, what I'm saying, Dr. Lee Waters mm -hmm. is a very uh, famous uh, psychologist and she's the author of a book called Strength Switch. And recently, she has done an uh, article with the guardians and uh, I have this link down here, which I, uh, that we probably can give to the audience uh, later on. Let me see that again. She I can probably put it on the screen one second. Let me see. It's on page nine, on my page nine. Page nine, okay. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the one. Um, sorry, Sandra, yeah, so this, continue. My name, yeah, um, uh, at, at this difficult time, I really think that uh, uh, how to create some more positive uh, energy, positive thoughts and actions in the home is take out some news that, uh, that we, we watch in the morning and see if there's any silver linings in there. And in this article, she talks um, um, great ways of uh, uh, looking at silver linings. And as we talk, uh, there are a lot of silver linings in I've been talking about. For example, now that my son is at home, he has to learn how to use Excel to create a, a, a spreadsheet to, to do his schedule. Okay, and that if this is in the school time, you have no time to learn this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's a simple thing. But is that we just have to at crisis like this, we just need to pull our thoughts into good thoughts to think about what can we, uh, what something good we can get out of that. And um, I'm also a, a, a great fan of uh, Gretchen Rubens, and she's the uh, author of a book called The Happiness Project. And it's great because we uh, give a lot of great tips and uh, a, a lot of blog posts about how to uh, 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 create more happiness in your family. And uh, her book is wonderful. So those are the, some of the um, uh, strategies, some websites, some uh, uh, things that uh, as a family collectively we can do uh, to boost each other's um, uh, positive energy up to help each other uh, uh, when we are in stressful time. Uh, another one is good, it's called the Action for Happiness. Mm -hmm. And it's another website. I actually have a photo called uh, uh, Seven, Photo Seven. Photo Seven. And they come out, yes, they come out monthly, a calendar, which is very interesting uh, there for family to do. And this one is called, from April, the theme for the month is active coping calendar. Mm -hmm. And you see on this book, oh, there's 30 days, okay? And every day, as a family, or by yourself, we can do something like this. For example, the first, uh, first of April, make a plan to help you keep calm and stay in contact. Can you see that? Okay. And just lots of uh, uh, little ways to help us go through this difficult time. Day by day. Sandy, somebody was asking. Uh, somebody was asking, "What is the name of the other?" Is Gretchen Rubin? R U B I N. Yep. Exactly, um, and I also have a link here. Uh, it's on my page nine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's a great book that uh, uh, that she actually wrote ten years ago. It's called The Happiness Project, and this year she had launched. Um, something called the Happiness Project Experience, which she shared with everyone, how we can also create, have, uh, do a project as such. And I actually sign up for that, and for every month, it comes out with a, a theme, and then we ourselves would think of some resolutions for that month, mm -hmm. and basically, those resolution is based on what are those things, some of the things that can make me happier. For this month. I, okay. I noticed that you, you were talking about meditation. Um, when I think yeah. about meditation, I always think like adults <laughs> that need to de-stress themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're talking about teaching children yeah. meditation. Um, what do you tell us a little bit okay. about that? 
Yeah, wonderful. Let me just finish off very quickly on the action of uh, for happiness. Right, it's another that. website. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. This calendar is excellent, and uh, uh, and this website is excellent as well. It's very children friendly. It's a great things for younger children as well. For uh, us to print this um, calendar out, stick it on the uh, fridge, and for the kids to every day do a little things, little things every day, mm -hmm. and ev all these things it boosts their uh, positivity to make them know that uh, the world is not dark. Yeah, I think okay, that that one. So the next one on the mindful uh, uh, meditation, I think is very important. I'm going to pull out a photo first, number eight. Number eight, sure. All right. Who's this handsome So I have boy? a son. son. <laughs> I have a, a son who is practicing uh, uh, meditation uh, uh, every day. Start off with one minute, and we're doing five minutes. I think um, a mindfulness. Uh, the 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 real definition uh, said mindfulness is a human ability to be fully present and aware of where we are and what we are doing, and prevent being overly reactive or over overwhelmed by what's going on around us and I can tell you as we are going this difficult time mindfulness exercise and meditation are very important for the well-being of everyone in the family I know some people will say well meditation is not my thing mindfulness is not my thing I sit there uh, I, monkey mind goes all while I can tell you I have the monkey mind in myself many many years <laughs> But I guarantee you, every day if you do one or two minutes of meditations and just to concentrate on your own breathing mm -hmm. and not think about anything else, it is really uh, uh, a very good way to keep our um, uh, sanity, and, put it that way. And if anything, this is a time where we don't have anything else to do, so we might as well try something new. So I think of parents who've never done meditation, <laughs> Give it a go. Do it with your children. See where it takes you. Learn something yeah, new. Yeah, and also new. wonderful thing, uh, wonderful way to do it with the family as well. You know, uh, uh, move all the furniture in the living room, all lie down uh, there um, uh, in a circle, mm -hmm. have uh, some background music. On YouTube, you have like tons and tons of free um, meditation music mm -hmm. and just quiet mind down for two minutes. And I can guarantee you, it really increases the productivity and efficiency of uh, of children when they're doing work. Let's show photo number nine as well. Sure. I'm very proud of uh, number nine. Mm -hmm. Somebody liked your comment about monkey mind. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Picture number nine. We <laughs> so we, uh, my son, don't just post this for my pictures. Okay, we we do that when we and we go outside for our hourly break. And he honestly told me that moms is really helped. I wish I could do that in school. Mm -hmm. In school, they don't get to do any of this, okay? And having mm -hmm. having a um, uh, uh, a five minute, ten minute, I said that. But and then he asked me, mom, what if that ten minutes, nine minutes? I'm thinking about my gaming time. <laughs> Only one minute. I am a, a meditating. I said it's still good. It is still good. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. Of course, we can um, uh, we build it up. Our mind uh, is so powerful. We build it up slowly, slowly. We can do a bit longer as we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our last, uh, my next was uh, number uh, ten. Mm -hmm. We're at uh, the uh, mindful exercise and meditations, and it's just this. I see this as a, another silver lining. If our kids are in school right now. They would not have this opportunity to take up. Of course, I know they have recess. Mm -hmm. They would have they have PE time. But being able to be at home and go down and then uh, uh, taking a break from your work. And this is wonderful ways that we as parents uh, that can do during this very difficult time. This we call the temporary new life that we have, and is to be creative and be positive to know that that this will pass but in the meantime let's find something that we can all try out to do so if, if you never try meditation never try mindfulness exercise 
go on YouTube, there are plenty of those meditation for dummy, meditation beginners, or, or, or thing. And oh, they are actually really, 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 really helpful. Mm -hmm. And my next thing that I, uh, my, my next tips I think is very good in keeping the house with a positive um, uh, uh, yeah. vibes is, yeah, journaling, I think it's, a, uh, it's an absolute uh, um, uh, great strategy for all of us. Even though I am a, a writer, uh, I think writing is a form of self-discovery and therapy, okay? And it's an excellent way for children to, to develop as a young age. Again, another silver lining there, okay? Uh, and, and writing out, of course, because a lot of time, kids younger age or even older age, they have a difficulty of expressing themselves verbally. Having them to, uh, to giving them a channel and avenues to go and write it out, write out their thoughts, uh, uh, what is keeping their mind uh, busy, upset, writing it out is really good. We're not asking him to write, uh, asking them to write an essay. I had to be corrected English. Stream of consciousness. Just keep on writing. Keep on writing. So my son every morning would do something called automatic writing, which lasts about half an hour. It's a little bit like a journal, but whatever comes to him, he write it down and he write it down, and it helps him. And another uh, um, a great website website that I got here is called the the Random Word Generator. If you want, uh, uh, I think that is a great website that it comes up with writing prompts, okay? And it's a great way for kids to um, to say, even five minutes, 10 minutes, okay? Non-stop writing about one topic, okay? And, and journaling has proven to be something that is very soothing for our mind, take uh, uh, stress uh, off our minds as well. And guess what? Recently, my son said, mom, I've been writing automatic uh, journal for a few months now, I come up with uh, another way of capturing my thoughts, which is recording. You want to do audio. Okay. I said, great. <laughs> yeah, do that. Okay. This, this is, again, there's another silver lining there. He now said, uh, because he had more time at home, okay, I said, okay, you can build that into your, your routine, your schedule, that you, you're going to explore an app or, 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 or a site that can help you I mean, that, that you can do the recording. I mean, do your journaling through recording. He becomes a blogger so, I mean, one day and then becomes very famous on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then earlier, and the, um, uh, my next um, uh, tips is what you were saying earlier, Fernando, uh, Fernando was the gratitude affirmation. I think gratitude is the, uh, one of the most important uh, elements that we need to... Um, uh, instill in our children over and over. Uh, being grateful at times of abundance is easy, mm -hmm. but showing grateful time of adversity is hard, isn't it? It, it is. is. Yeah. It it is really require us to be able to look beyond the pain, beyond what we are enduring right now. Okay, with uh, uh, it is it is as simple as being grateful for the meal that we have on the table. For the toilet paper in the bathroom, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, healthy, right? I, I just think that um, uh, not as kids, even as adults, we need to show more gratitude of what we have. We take so much thing for granted that sometimes that we uh, lose over sleep of things that we think that we don't have. Oh yes, we don't have, but we also need to count our blessing that what we do have mm -hmm. a lot. We do have a we have the family together. We have the roof over our head. We have the fresh air in, uh, that we can breathe. We have the fresh water. I mean, all those things that we have to uh, uh, show appreciation. And that uh, really would um, uh, boost uh, positive energy for the house. And quick tips of how to uh, integrate this um, gratitude affirmation in our daily life is put up some uh, favorite quotes mm -hmm. of gratitude on the fridge. Uh, uh, on the wall, in the bathroom. And my favorite person is Brene Brown. I'm sure that um, a lot of people have heard of her. And her um, quotes are wonderful, wonderful. Let's show one on photo 11. Okay. I don't have to chase extraordinary moments to find happiness. It's right in front of me if I'm paying attention and practicing gratitude. 
It's so true. Right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is really true. And uh, we doesn't take, although a lot of kids would say uh, 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 during this difficult time, I don't have this. I can't go out. I can't do my work. I can't this. I can't this. So but as parents, what we can really do is every morning at breakfast, go around the table. Everyone said one gratitude affirmation. I'm grateful that I was able to brush my teeth. Yeah. Nothing is tricky. Nothing is uh, 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 wrong. It's how you show your gratitude. I think that is a, um, a something that we can, as parents, can um, help our children to be more grateful of what they have and to understand that uh, it is not given. Many things are not given, and we learn how to be grateful. Our life will be much uh, uh, happier. Hey, Our think, next, uh, the next. I think it's an exercise uh, have, of of refocusing the mind uh, from yeah. the negative to the positive. So from the don't have to what we do have, um, and and I like this this kind of uh, positive affirmations. Um, you wanted me to show another picture. Yeah, the photo number twelve really says it all. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of my life, I want to be able to say that I contributed more than I criticize. That's from Brene Brown. It is a wonderful uh, uh, quote, and I have changed it too. At the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of this crisis, mm -hmm. I want to be able to say that I contributed more than I criticize. It's a great thing, that a great affirmation that we put up. For, ev uh, for everyone in the family to say, you know what, instead of criticizing what we don't have, I uh, wish I could go to school, I wish I have uh, my baseball practice, I wish I could hang out with my friends, let's stop criticizing the life that you don't have right now and start appreciating what you do have. I love that, Sandy. One thing <laughs> is not sick. You're not in the hospital, okay? We're okay, all right? <laughs> and and those are things for us to be grateful, grateful for. So we have to, uh, 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 I can't stress uh, enough that uh, gratitude is one of the key things that uh, as parents that we need to um, show by example, to show gratitude and our children will say, oh really, I can be as simple as showing gratitude for uh, having a good night's sleep? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about, about scheduling, something that just came to my mind. Um, you have to work from home, so the scheduling can be based on two people's schedule. So, for example, um, when I need to have a conference, I need my son to be doing this, or I need my son to be busy doing something else. So, it could also be um, a concerted schedule in that way. Um, just a exactly. of something like that. Okay, sorry, you were going to say? That's no, no, good question. Actually, uh, on that point, I l I'd like to elaborate a little bit. Is Yes, okay. when we are, have uh, five members uh, 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 five members in the family, what do we do? We have five schedules. What do we do? We're going to cla clash. What I suggest to do is we all have our own schedule. As parents, we have to work from home. Is What is the best to do is have a collective uh, schedule that all our things are in there and we work around it. I mean, we, I mean, children say, for example, now because they're not in school, so they don't have to uh, a certain hours to do their work. So we can schedule it in, in say, for example, daddy have to have a, a conference call from 10 to 12, okay? So the mother would go and attend to the kids while the father have his, um, uh, uh, company school, well, the, yeah, exactly, and the kids would be doing their work. Okay, it's very much like uh, respecting each other. That father, daddy is uh, in the study room working. The son will be working from his desk in his room for that hours as well. And I guess uh, as adults, we also have the flex flexibility of organizing the time of our conference call. I mean, as much as we can, is uh, to work around the rest of the family, mm -hmm. right? 
the fact that we have nowhere to go. We have nowhere to go. Everybody's in their house. It it's okay. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and I think having a collective a schedule that everybody can see what everybody's doing, yeah. but yet also have your own schedule of what you want to do, but doesn't clash with everybody. Say, for example, dinner time is everybody's dinner time. Yeah. Family time. Is, is, is to get, I know those are easy. For example, uh, we, you have younger children who need some help with uh, the online homework. We can schedule it to, okay, mommy's free uh, after dinner. I mean, uh, sorry, after lunch, two to four. Okay, so either the father or the mother schedule two to four to attend to one of the children to help them with the work. Well, one parent has one, uh, one child. If you have three children at home, the other parent would have to attend to another one. But if you have two teenagers, one younger one, we can also ask the teenager sibling to step in to help the younger to one. Contribute. And which is a wonderful way of family bonding, sibling bonding together. Can you imagine with they in school? They don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. But now that we're at home, it is good um, for the older one to take some responsibility to help the younger one. Say, for example, oh, uh, Julie, are you free to uh, help um, little Michael for an hour? What time suits you? Oh, I'm busy in the morning because I have my uh, my, my Zoom class. How about in the afternoon, three to four? Great, right? And the little one would uh, know that a big sister, uh, Julie, is going to help him from three to four. So he will put that uh, a particular uh, assignment later to do and do something else first. This, this um, kind of synchronizing um, calendars and activities teaches so many things to children. They, they, it teaches them that there's people out there that they can reach out for help, but at the same time that yeah. um, they have to accommodate to certain needs that other people have. So it's not that gratuitous. It's not that automatic. Like, I need help. Give it to me right now. We need to compromise. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, and yeah. it's all brought together. The yeah, exactly. I, I, I love your point, uh, uh, Fernando, is nothing's given. But this collaboration require creativity, require uh, patience, persistence, and kindness, and being supportive of each other, mm -hmm. you know? And, and all these things, during this difficult time, it is a blessing in disguise. We have to look at it as that way. Yeah. It's a blessing in disguise. We're stuck together and let's make the best out of it and help each other out. And I have a list of things and then that is a great uh, uh, suggestions for families that can do together to uh, uh, rekindle, rebuild or build uh, uh, a much stronger relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of the suggestions for, for doing this? Let's say there are some relationships that are a little bit strained or, or a parent that is, has been a little bit absent uh, in normal life, but this time they're there, they're present, they have an opportunity. What kind of things can they do to, well, rekindle the, their relationship? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, being together um, uh, in this abnormal time, it is the best time to um, have more family time together, to um, do things that we normally could not do. For example, make a big scrapbook of family holidays and everyone contributes, writing the caption, collecting photos and des designing the scrapbook. You know, that's uh, uh, one thing we can do. Uh, one, one, one person in the family probably is very good in drawing. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, someone you know, writing. Someone loves collecting old photos out, you know, and it's just a wonderful way to do that. Second thing, let's make the spring cleaning a family project. Oh, okay, yes. clean up together. Instead of just mom doing it or the father doing it, you know, and uh, uh, make it something fun to do. I know it's not fun, but uh, we make it fun yeah. by uh, going room to room. And to to help each other, I was like, oh, do you need it? Do I need that? You know, that, that's what I, I did recently as well at home. Mm -hmm. Earlier, learning language together as a family is wonderful. Okay, we don't have to pick the most difficult language just to learn, but something that's fun, okay? And every day we practice 
a word, we practice a, a phrase, we make a quiz, we uh, test each other out, we uh, have a competition, we uh, challenge each other, you know, yeah. whoever loses, uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, sing a song, you have to uh, wash the dishes, and uh, you don't get to eat your favorite apple or something, you know, just be creative, this is a wonderful time to be creative. Mm. Uh, learning a language, you said earlier. Uh, and other things, you know, we we have uh, 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 make a video, mm -hmm. make a virtual album of this self-isolating time. Yeah. Honestly, this is one lifetime thing. Much like a short clips of daily life at home, funny moments, being interviewed by another members of the family, capture uh, snippets of the uh, Skype conversation with relative and friends. Um, it, these are all wonderful things that uh, we can uh, 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 create. Our kids love getting their hands on the keyboard, the screen, uh, on the website. <laughs> have them do that together, you know. And I have a couple of photos that I think is very uh, uh, funny and very appropriate to show. Is 13, 14, and 15. Okay, let's go with 13. <laughs> what is yeah. this? What are we looking at here? <laughs> Look. I mean, isn't that creative? I mean, instead of I mean, no mask, what do we do, right? I mean, I mean, these are great photos that you can capture, you know? It's a 14. 14, let's go to 14. All right. <laughs> right? Alternative to no mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let's look at 15. 15, yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that like, like, a, like a transparent folder? I hope it's not a plastic bag as such. <laughs> I think it's like the plastic um, uh, uh, water bottle. I mean, the big one, the oh, okay. giant one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, they have a lot. You know, I, mean, I found all this on um, um, through all this uh, social media. I'm saying that you make this as a fun project to do you know make a video take those photos and uh, uh, search all those things online it's great another 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 wonderful things we can do as a family to uh to bond to um uh, build on our uh, relationship is let's make a new dish every day but do baking mm -hmm. you know make it fun again make it a, like a, a competition a dish of the week <laughs> kick of the month Right, and and it just I I, I tell you all this um, uh, um, uh, being able to do things together is something that we don't normally able to do, right? The when uh, uh, working parents, we have kids who have to uh, baseball practice, basketball practice after school. That the, the time to do uh, things together is a very uh, limited. So let's make the best out of this time right now instead of drooling on, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Well, but instead to say, what can we do? Look at photo 17 and 18. And um, it's something that that I dreamed that my, my son could do. But now he has lots of time. So he spent a lot of time in the kitchen, uh -huh. helping out, cutting, uh, preparing. So today <laughs> at lunchtime, he made um, French toast for me. As I was busy preparing for the um, uh, uh, the interview uh, uh, tonight, which is your morning, is he cook? Uh -huh. Okay, he enjoys cook. Okay, and and just make these a fun things for the families to do. We don't have to all sit down, always be moping, to blaming each other, criticizing, and arguing. Set up and lift each other up and have some fun, you know. And lastly. Make a family collage of fam uh, a photo that we can display on the wall. Having one contribute to it. Uh, somebody okay. was asking about um, artistic um, or musical uh, skills that could be developed. So that's also a good idea. If you're talking about learning a language, it could be, hey, let's learn how to play the guitar together, or let's learn how to paint or sculpt together. So. Uh, language is one of those things, but my my friend was just suggesting, yeah, how about musical or artistical activities that yeah. parents could yeah. join together. Now, I would like to move on a little bit to to mm -hmm. the the topic of 
distance learning, online mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. What are your right. views on this? What are some of the advantages? Some of the silver linings, mm -hmm. as you like to put them, and also some yeah. of the challenges. So what is what is your take on, on sure. well, the situation that we are yeah. forced to, to deal with, online learning? Yep, yep. With, with uh, school closed right now, and um, uh, everybody is jump on the Zoom learning, online learning, and I myself is a great fan of distant learning. I earn all my three degrees actually by distant learning, mm -hmm. and I can vow for a uh, great thing for distant learning. But compared with the time that I did uh, distant learning to the time now. I tell you now it's so sophisticated, it's so advanced, it is just, uh, I, I can tell you this is most likely be the, um, uh, the trend going forward. I, I even heard uh, a few months ago that maybe university are no more needed in the future. Everything is <laughs> virtual, everything is online. Who needs to go to a, 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 on a campus and go to a classroom, right, or a lecturer, a lecture. My son has been off school two and a half months, three now, okay, and um, he has been doing online studying since then. And of course, this is not ideal because it lacks the social interactions with his peers mm. and he's not able to uh, 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 um, interact with his teachers, uh, uh, learn those social skills in school. But because we are talking about this and learning about learning the academic knowledge, uh, in my opinion, there are three main benefits to distant learning. Okay, so especially pen and pencil, for people, pen and pencil, <laughs> take a paper yes. and write down. Exactly, it's uh, especially good for preteens and teenagers. Mm -hmm. First one is it foster independence learning. Second one is it master the skill of time management. Mm -hmm. And the third one is teaches our children to excel in the computer skill, including typing, saving a document, searching the web. You probably say, well, they know all this, but in a proper way. Let me go through uh, each one, uh, one by one. Independent learning, what's that mean? It requires children to develop their own independent thinking. This requires critical thinking and creativity. Online learning platform and content this state is just, like I said earlier, it's very sophisticated, it's very well designed, it's very user friendly and very interactive. I've, I've been doing a few online courses with Coursera and uh, uh, and also um, a couple others, so I'll put the link up. And they are just, might, be, they might as well be as good as you're in a classroom. Mm. So they have virtual, the contents are very good, very interactive, and um, uh, the, uh, the overwhelming wealth of knowledge out there is really at, the, at our children's fingertips. And they type in something and a whole uh, line of things uh, come down. Uh, because of this online learning, it really forces our children to think independently, to uh, use a critical thinking skill to, um, to do all their assignments, to uh, uh, find ways to um, interact with uh, the platform. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I really think that the independent learning is a great um, uh, benefit for in distant learning, okay? The second one is the time management. Why time management is related to distant learning? Because the, uh, through distant learning or online learning, you have to uh, uh, be very uh, vigilant with your time uh, schedule, mm -hmm. when to, uh, to turn in certain work, when you have to uh, comment on your uh, uh, on, uh, classmate online. Currently, my son is doing an uh, online course with um, uh, CTY, the Center for Talented Youth in America. And again, he learns so much about 
working independently and uh, uh, managing his time by having a very, very uh, clear and uh, practical schedule to make sure that he turned in every single uh, assignment, uh, comments, uh, teachers' um, uh, uh, feedback. It's just a lot of um, uh, information coming to them. If they don't have a good schedule, a good uh, time managing the time well, they fall behind. They'll meet deadlines. And it's not just missing one deadline. If you miss one deadline, you're not able to do the second assignment because so it didn't turn in the first one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And but the, it's not just a piling up. It's you cannot move forward because you you didn't turn in um, the, your previous week's work. So um, and it's really uh, my my son have really learned that lesson in the first couple of weeks of this six weeks course, and now he's getting slow to getting the hang of it. Is mom. Uh, every Monday is a start of a week. I, on a Sunday night, he would go into the uh, dashboard of this of this online learning and look at that following week. What are the uh, expectations of him? What assignments? What commenting that he needs to uh, uh, turn in? It's just a lot of all these things is really need uh, 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 very focused, uh, very independent, independent in the sense that. Um, uh, he has to be the one to decide when he would do which work and before what work in order to complete the week's work, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it truly okay. is very different from just going to school when the bell rings and then you go to this classroom and then it changes. Somebody is constantly pushing you to go to the next thing, go to the next thing, go to the next thing. But when it's online and you're doing it at home, children have to... Well, there's nobody out there breathing on their necks, <laughs> telling them, "Hey, go to the yeah. next one." They have to realize that it, they have to do that by themselves. So it's a very important yeah. difference and a very important silver lining, I guess. Yeah, exactly. In class, you if you like daydream, like my son would do a lot of time, <laughs> and then uh, uh, and then the next minute he would say, "Not uh, the the person next to him." He say, "What did the teacher say? What homework do we have to do?" <gasps> but now he has no one. Yep. He, he cannot know. So he's really on top of the game. He's really focused. Yes, yes, yes. We are missing the social a bit of it, but there's other way to cover that. But in the meantime, I really think that the uh, the blessing in this guy, the silver lining is he is very, I mean, kids out there are very focused because they know that before the next Zoom lecture for the, for the older kids, they have to complete a certain work. Mm-hmm. In order to make that contribution in, in in the next Zoom class, so is this um, um that is the second best thing that I, I think for the distant learning is helping our children to uh, learn the importance of time management, okay. and uh, uh, that again is good for for life. Honestly, it's really good for life. And finally, um, uh, distant learning uh, third benefit I think really is with uh, life technology uh, the, uh, technology knowledge. Honestly, all the parents out there, let's not fight it. There's no way we can eliminate the screen time in our kids. It can only get more, okay? So my strategy is, it's not to limit the, um, the screen time or to stop the screen, uh, screen time, but instead, make the best out of uh, technology, which is, uh, uh, um, uh, but one step further that we need to think is not to stop them from getting onto the screen, but more so is how to use technology in the right way. What is the right way? What is the right way? Which is, it's nothing wrong to play video games, it's nothing wrong to go on to the Fortnite, but equally, you need to learn and time to do other things online as well, on, on the website as well. For example, learn how to, yes, I, I, I know already there are many kids who uh, uh, have already and a lot more wants to be the YouTuber, okay, wants to be the, uh, 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 the next big uh, gamer or whatever. I know my son also dreamt that, the mom walk, uh, uh, should I try? I said, you know what, no one is stopping you from being the next YouTuber or the gamer, yeah. but learn the basic, learn the fundamental, but by just looking at the screen, 
playing the game for five hours is not going to make you a good YouTuber right. or gamer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the what really makes you uh, uh, um, a good blogger, a good uh, um, YouTuber or gamer is you have to learn the basic. You have to understand how to build a, a, a computer, how to build a, a, a programming language. If you want to spend five hours to every day to learn about programming, I help you. I'll I'll find you. I'll I I'll, I will be more than happy. What that, do you see my point? My point is I'm not stopping you from uh, screen time. Yeah. I'm not uh, trying to say you cannot play game, but I'm saying that equally you need to spend time to learn about the fundamentals of technology. Yeah, when parents so, have a certain, a certain amount of screen time for the children, they could allocate different functions. Okay, this is going to be for gaming, but this is going to be to develop whatever interest you have. Exactly. So, for like, example, like, like a, if like you want a, to be a YouTuber, you can learn how cameras work, how photography works. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. You pick on the interest they don't, of the yeah. children and, and, and give them a way to, well, learn something new. Exactly. Like I give my son a challenge. I say, now that you are you are at home, other than doing uh, your schoolwork, uh, allocate some of your time to learn something on uh, 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 how to create an app, mm -hmm. how to uh, whatever you interest you, whatever interests you. I don't know. I actually I'm not uh, tech savvy, so I I don't know how to name all the examples, but they do. Okay. Uh, for example, create a um, make a, website. a platform. Make a podcast. Yeah, you know, what, <laughs> exactly. You know, and uh, uh, very, they can be very creative. That is what I'm trying to say is that we need to re-educate our children on screen time. It's screen time, to me, is just that simple. You look at the screen, it's uh, not interactive, it's one side only, and you watch and you watch, whether you're binge uh, watching uh, um, uh, those YouTube videos, uh, Girls love to watch those kind of YouTube, what singing, uh, dancing. And so, I mean, you can go on and on and on and on and on. But the point is, they cannot just be watching uh, 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 on the screen without it, learning what's behind. It, I think I think that it's important to have a mental shift between uh, or trying to find the balance between consuming content on screen online and creating content mm -hmm. or or benefiting from that content trying to uh, extrapolate um, what's being consumed and what you can actually develop from what you're seeing so mm -hmm. I, I, I think of what you mentioned earlier about the journaling that is such a good idea because that is in fact what blogging is a blogger is journaling his activities day by day you add in a cell phone mm -hmm. and you already have a YouTube mm -hmm. channel so I, mm -hmm. I completely agree with you and I encourage our viewers who have children to to make that switch mm -hmm. from consuming uh, mm -hmm. to perhaps creating content, learning how to make it, learning how to put it out there and, and perhaps that's, uh, that's a venture for them in the future. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, last point on that is, you know, you, we have a uh, 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 family that will have emerging teens and teens you know, they're very good with the technology. You give them, give them any phone, any computer. Within minutes, they can turn and uh, the, uh, uh, help you to do 101 things that us parents cannot do. Is make good use of them. You know, to uh, have them say, for example, I love cooking. I want to collect all my uh, recipes. How how do I how do I make it into a, 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 a online? I'm mean, not online. A virtual uh, cookbook. Yep. Uh, that can have tabs, I can have, have that. I don't know, I, that's what I want, but I don't know how to do it. So I give um, uh, my son a challenge, help me out on that, okay? You get, I give you two hours, uh, I mean five hours a week, you help me to think of a way, find something to help me to create this um, uh, um, uh, a virtual cookbook that I can start collecting my, my, my recipes. Mm -hmm. and, and he loves but that means he can get his fingers more on the computer, which is fine. And then you fully, you can go and watch YouTube for two hours. You can uh, uh, um, uh, play game for two hours. It's just the balance. Mm. And let's not how powerful the technology out there. And it can only get uh, better.
faster, uh, more useful. So I am advocating children to uh, be more knowledgeable about technology. And like you said, uh, Fernando, is instead of content, uh, consuming the content, but how to create content. And that's what uh, the, uh, the world needs to be. Mm -hmm. All right, Sandy, we are coming to the end of this broadcast. Um, I would like to do one thing before we go. I would like to summarize some of the things that uh, you mentioned, some of the things that stuck in my head people who like this yep. content can go uh, back and watch it again but I really like the point on um, gratitude that is something that is really important in a time like this the idea of scheduling um, certain activities because that is the first thing that goes out the window there's a schedule at school mm. but when they're at home well you got to create a schedule that's a fantastic fantastic tip and I and I thank you for sharing that with us also, the idea about meditation is something that never come to my mind, but it is something that children can learn and benefit from. Um, it's, um, I don't have children, but I figure that a lot of people out there might want to give it a try. And uh, the, the last part that I, that I thought was really important is not hiding the news from children, just discussing them openly and, and um, helping to alleviate the fear that they may generate by sharing the, the watching of the news and the learning of the events and giving them the comfort mm -hmm. and the safety that they need knowing that the parents are there and that the parents are doing everything they can to keep them safe. So if I can leave you guys that are watching with these four ideas, I think that this is uh, very successful. But if you want more, then go back and watch the rest of the video with Sandy. Sandy, uh, do you have any final thoughts or anything that you would like to say before we close up? Now, I'll finish off with my uh, last photo, uh, photo number 22. All right. And uh, I want to end, end uh, my time with everyone online is to lift everybody's spirit up is while, we are, while everything is still up in the air, let's stay put, stay calm, and stay positive, <laughs> okay? And if anybody wants to reach out to me to stay connected, I am working on uh, hosting a weekly live stream uh, session for parents mm -hmm. uh, starting in April. So if you would like to um, uh, uh, send me an email, uh, connect with me on Facebook, uh, I can be reached as below. Yeah, right here on the screen we yeah. have it, your email, your uh, Instagram, your Facebook, and your WeChat as well. So guys, yeah. if any one of you wants to get more information about the work that Sandy does or uh, learn more about how to cope with this particular situation the information is on the screen and it will also be in the description of this video so well i want to remind you all that um we are doing this very frequently and trying to bring more professionals to the channel to give information that is useful in this particular time last week we had dr oscar franco uh, the epidemiologist and today we've got sandy um let me remind you then that if you like the content on my channel you should subscribe to it and hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out and uh, make sure to follow me and sandy in our respective uh, social media so sandy thank you very much thank and, you so uh, much. well i hope to do this sometime soon again yes thank you so much everyone all the best okay bye bye for now guys